Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gode, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and the Homerton Fertility Center in London. So today we're going to talk about can we improve the chances of pregnancy in a frozen embryo replacement cycle? And we look towards guidance from a recent paper that has recently been published. So, and this paper was named as Individualized Luteal Phase Support in Artificially Prepared Frozen Embryo Transfer Based on Serum Progesterone Levels, a Prospective Cohort Study. And this comes from an excellent group which has done a huge amount of work in looking at progesterone levels. So what is the basis of this? Does a low serum progesterone a day before a frozen embryo replacement indicate a low pregnancy rate? And there is some evidence about it. But more importantly, if a low progesterone was seen a day before embryo transfer in a frozen cycle, does adding injectable progesterone change the outcome and get it back to that of injectable progesterone or back to where blood levels were good? So let's have a look at this paper. So done from November 2018 to January 2020. Genetically, genetically screened embryos PGTA, a single embryo transfer done in a large number of cases, and all these were frozen cycles. Progesterone level was done a day prior to frozen embryo replacement, and they were divided into two groups. When the progesterone was less than 10.6 nanogram per liter, another with progesterone was more than 10.6 nanogram per liter. This progesterone was continued to 10 weeks after a positive pregnancy test. Now, artificial preparations are probably the most convenient way of doing a frozen cycle. And this was based on reports that a low progesterone level, a low serum progesterone level can have a detrimental effect on the live birth rate. And this is what has been reviewed in this treatment. So if you look at the groups, serum progesterone was done on day four while on vaginal progesterone of 200 milligram eight hourly. If the progesterone level was greater than 10.6, the vaginal progesterone was continued and a frozen embryo replacement was done. But if the progesterone was less than 10.6, a single dose of subcutaneous progesterone, 25 milligram, was given. And if the next day the progesterone level continued to be less than 10.6 nanogram per ml, the procedure was cancelled, while if it went up to more than 10.6, the procedure was continued. And then the vaginal progesterone and the injections were continued till pregnancy and right up till 10 weeks. If you look at the results, considering that the progesterone levels were more than 10.6 in both the groups, the pregnancy rates, the clinical pregnancy rates, the ongoing pregnancy rates and the live birth rates were maintained. The miscarriage rates were very similar and thus, this does indicate that there was no difference in results. So it's one of the first studies which has looked at intervention after doing a serum progesterone a day earlier. There is no clear consensus regarding what should be the optimal progesterone levels or the optimal progesterone threshold in frozen cycles, but we think that there is a consensus coming around the level of 10. 4 to 10.6 nanogram per ml. Now this correlates to an adequate progesterone level which is similar to nature. So corpus luteum does very much similar uh, level of progesterone. If you look at the number of progesterone 
uh, levels which were less than 10.6, almost 61% of patients had progesterone levels of less than 10.6. And less than 8 nanogram, almost 38% of patients. So that's a significant proportion of patients who on vaginal will have a low progesterone levels. Most reached an optimum level just with one injection of subcutaneous progesterone. So if you look at the pharmacokinetics, the vaginal route provides a rapid endometrial absorption and the local effect due to the uterine first pass effect. Unfortunately, it seems to yield a lower circulating levels due to a very short half-life. Thus, adding injectable progesterone through a parenteral route could be an option which is rapid and can add to the high level of progesterone. And also probably they hypothesize that high progesterone levels, serum progesterone levels, could lower the subendometrial contractility that tends to occur. And probably that probably also helps to aid implantation. So in conclusion, I'll say it's a, it's a good paper because what it is telling us is, now, do we continue with a low progesterone level? Let's say a, a frozen cycle, your results tend to be significantly better. So can we fine tune, especially if you have got a euploid embryo, that you've started somebody on vaginal progesterone, or if you've started somebody on subcutaneous uh, at a lower dose or alternate day, why not do a serum progesterone a day earlier? And if it is low, why not intervene with adding injectables? Now, the evidence is slowly building up in these areas. It's not, we're not yet clear on the consensus. I think in my practice, I find it very logical to looking at the evidence to say, well, rather than keep measuring progesterone, which adds to a huge amount of workload, why don't we add injectable progesterone right through? And what we do notice is reasonably high progesterone levels with a good pregnancy rate. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Please like the page, please share it. Let's spread knowledge as much as we can. Thank you very much.